All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome to today's webinar. I've got one o'clock here. Um, so I want to make sure that we are staying on top of everything um, and expecting your time. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. If you are here for the staff portal webinar, you have made it to the right place. Um, today, of course, we will be talking about the staff portal. Um, but first, let's go ahead and uh, get some introductions done. So my name is Emily Cole. I am the uh, host and presenter here today. Uh, I am the product training specialist here with Jackrabbit. So anything to do with webinars, any one-on-one uh, -on -one trainings, uh, as well as trade show trainings that I am at. Um, I'll show you where you can find some of that information on how you can get uh, any training done with me. Uh, and then we have the lovely Melissa Barnes here today. She is one of our uh, support reps. So if you ever submit a ticket, uh, request a call, or um, submit anything in the chat, you might be able to chat with her. She is incredible, and she will be in the background today uh, going through the Q&A. Um, so just a reminder, today, uh, if you have been in any of my webinars uh, in the past couple of months, we uh, keep the chat closed, but we keep the Q&A open. That way, um, any questions that come in, I can pull a report at the end of this webinar and I can send that out to you. So any questions that are asked, the answer will be there and I will then send that out in an email tomorrow via Zoom. So you'll get an email from Zoom tomorrow that will have the webinar recording, the uh, questions and answers that were asked today, as well as a couple other helpful links. So let's go ahead and start chatting about what we're gonna be looking at today. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at today is staff portal settings. So then we're gonna very quickly go through all of that. And then the chunk of the webinar is gonna be in the actual staff portal itself. We're gonna talk about news, schedules, availability, the time card, attendance, skills and resources, and lastly will be the emails. Um, so I will go ahead and forewarn that this is a shorter webinar. Uh, I know it's scheduled for an hour, um, but I believe I will probably be talking for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, so plenty of time for questions and plenty of time for y'all to get back to work uh, sooner than later, rather than that full hour. So let's go ahead and get into Jackrabbit itself. Um, so here we are, we are in Jackrabbit. Um, and let's see here. Uh, all right, so we are here in Jackrabbit. The first thing I want to do is I wanna look at our Jackrabbit Help Center. So this is what I'm looking at when I am in um, Jackrabbit. So this is any, uh, any way that you can get to our Help Center, um, as well as you can submit a ticket, request a call, or chat with support here. Uh, so. When you are looking at this, you have a search bar right here. This is how you get access to anything in the help center. You've also got video help. You've got staff training options. This is where you can find really any of our training options um, that you do. So in, if you have a new staff member, you can go in there and you can look at the Jack, Jackrabbit training system. You can look at any webinars, any videos, uh, any trade show opportunities that are going to be coming up. Um, and then we've also got e-payment resources. So that's a great way for you to get information about e-payments. Down below here in the blue, we've got some ticket, request a call, and then we've also got chat with support. So these are great ways for you to get answers to your questions that you might not be able to find in the help center, video help, uh, staff training options, or e-payment resources. Um, if you ever see that this uh, chat with support is grayed out, you'll see that it will also say that the chat is uh, closed for the time being, and then it'll tell you when it does open. Um, so those are great ways for you to get answers to your questions. Up here at the top right, you've got connect with us. So you've got your Facebook user group. So if you click this, it would take you straight to the Facebook site. Um, and then you would be able to join the Facebook user group if you're not already a part. And then right over here to the right is this YouTube. Um, and that way you are able to get to the YouTube channel um, and look at any of our videos that we've uploaded right there. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of things. So bear with me. There we go. All right. So let's close this out. And then we are going to go right over here to when you are in the, when you're looking for the staff portal, you're going to go right here to staff. 
And then as you can see right here, staff portal, and you can launch staff portal. Right now, we're gonna go to these portal settings. So these are the settings that you're looking at when you are looking at your um, staff portal. When you're setting it up, these are ones that you're gonna be looking at. The first thing we're gonna be looking at is the staff session timeout session, the staff session timeout limit. Um, so let's say my staff member logs in and they forget to log out. Uh, how long will the system allow them to still be logged in without any activity? This is set at 10 minutes. I can change this to five minutes. It goes up in five minute increments all the way up to eight hours. So that is how you can change that. So I'm gonna keep that at 10 hours. And then we are looking at features. So what features do we want them to be able to use? When we're talking about features, we're talking about attendance, we're talking about skills or levels, we're talking about the time clock, and we're talking about lesson plans. And then it also is gonna show, do you want to allow remote access for these features? Uh, I've got no or yes, those are the two options here. Um, and you can change that based off of how you want your organization to look. The next thing is we've got family and student display options. So what information do you want displayed in the staff portal for your student list page? You've got age, gender, birth date, family balance, or class balance, future drop date, primary contact, and FOGO. Um, so you can change these by clicking it. That's kind of a yes or no. Um, and then you can save changes when you do update anything. And then do you want to show additional information? Roll notes, do you want those to be editable? Do you want primary contacts to be shown, emergency contacts, family address, grade level, allergies or special needs, medications, disabilities, and immunizations? All of this in, in all of these settings is based off of your organization and how you want your staff to be able to utilize their staff portal and what information you want them to see. When it comes to attendance options, do you want your staff to be able to save partial attendance? What that means is let's say I am a little bit, I'm a staff member and I am going ahead and looking at my uh, attendance for the day for classes that haven't started yet. Um, I can go in and I can say, okay, I know that uh, Bob is gonna be gone for this week. So I can go ahead and go in there and say that he's gonna be absent for a certain amount of classes that uh, have not started yet. And then you can save that if you have this checked as yes. If you have no, then that means that the staff member must mark every student as present or absent before saving the attendance page. And I'll show that when we're actually in the staff portal. Y'all will have to bear with me. I am pregnant and I feel like my lungs just can't keep up today. So bear with me. Um, if it sounds like I'm trying to catch my breath, it's because I am, because this baby is taking up all the room uh, that I have in my body. So let's continue on to skills and level options. Uh, for skills, do you want to display skills assigned to classes or skills assigned to students? Um, and then when you edit any skills, um, do you want emails to be sent out? So I've got this saved as never send emails. You can also do it where you can do staff option to send emails or automatically send email. So let's say you've got skills attached to a class and you want um, an email automatically sent out. So you would go right here when the um, student has attained a new skill. You can go right here. You can include skill level or notes, include class location, and then you can put a header and a footer in there as well. So I'm gonna save, save that as never send emails. Keep on going down here to time clock departments. We've got add department and then you can have max of uh, 50 departments. And then I've also got, um, when you add, you can very quickly just add here. You can put in your department code, which is a short name or abbreviation, the department name, and then the department managers if you have. And then you can also add time clock pay periods. So you can look at this as current, current and future, past, closed, or all. And then you can add a payment, reopen a payment, pay period, or delete all. And then right here is the time entry settings. So you've got time buffer. That means, um, let's say I have a class that starts at 8 a.m. Uh, do I wanna allow my staff to clock in a little bit early to get ready for that class? If yes, you can do it per class, and I've got this set as a 15-minute time buffer. 
And then our types, this is the types of hours that you that your staff will be able to pick when they are putting in their time. You want overtime, personal, sick, holiday, or vacation. Let's say you don't offer sick time, you can just very quickly un unclick this or uncheck that, um, and that will get rid of that. And then the default time entry method, this is um, how you want to how you want them to be um, able to clock in. So there's three different options. There's clock in and out, there's manual in and out, and then there's total hours. Clock in and out, that's very simple. It's just saying that uh, I literally click a button that says clock in. When I'm done working for the day, I click clock out, um, and it will automatically populate the time of how long. For manual in and out, you will go in and you will say, okay, at 8.05 this morning, I clocked in, and at 1.10 is when I've clocked out. Um, so you, your staff will manually type in the time that they are checking in or out. And then the last thing is total hours. That's where you just say, hey, I worked 8.75 hours today. And you just type that in. So I'm going to keep this as clock in or out. I'm going to save my changes since I made a couple of changes. And then we are going to go right here to staff, staff portal. And we're going to launch the staff portal. And it's going to pop up in a new... Um, frame, and then we're going to go ahead and click Launch Staff Portal. Um, actually, let me go back and show you. Bear with me, I'm sorry. Uh, you can choose your location here. That's what I was trying to show you. You can go to Gym or Main. I'm going to keep it as my Gym as my location. I'm going to launch my Staff Portal, and this is where it's going to have your staff uh, pick. Um, do you want it, uh, or your username and password, that's where we will put all that. And then this is where you will be brought or your staff will be brought when they log in. As you can see here, there's department news, there's staff news. So for the um, department news, uh, this just says, please remind parents to park closest to the gym, starting 9 one for concrete repair. This is something that you can um, put in if you have something that you want to tell the entire department. Uh, rather than staff, you can do staff just based off of your actual staff. I do see that a hand was, was raised. Um, if you do have a question, you can very uh, easily put that in in the Q&A, and that is where we will be taking any questions um, for today's webinar. So uh, whoever raised their hand, I'm sorry I didn't see your name, but you can go ahead and put that in, in the Q&A. To edit these, the department news and the staff news, if we minimize out of here, we go back to staff, we go to staff news, and this is how you can edit your staff news. So you just type it in, you can edit it however you would like, and then you save it when you are done, and that will take care of that. For department news, again, we go to staff, department news. You pick the department that you want to edit. So I'm going right here to Jim. I'm gonna edit that department. And again, I can change any of this. So let's say I want this to be background color highlighted of that dark or bright yellow. So then I can save that. As you can see, it's been changed here. So then if I go back to my staff portal and I refresh it, now that has been updated there. So that's how you can edit those. So that is how we do the so now let's look at schedules. When you're looking at the schedule here in the staff portal, you'll go right here to my schedule. And this is going to show you all of the um, classes that you as the staff member are uh, assigned to. You can change this by session. If you only want to look at the current session or whatever session you're trying to look at, you can go to the 2024 summer, um, which is my current session that I'm in. Um, I can go right there and I can say, okay, here's the three classes that I am currently assigned to in the current session that my um, staff is running through. And then if we go back to all sessions, you can also change this or filter this by location here. So you can do location, you can do it by class if you want it in uh, alphabetical order. order. Um, you can do it by status. You can do it by session. You can do it all sorts of different ways. Same thing here with events. If you go right here to events, you can see this staff member is only assigned to one. 
Um, but if there were multiple ones, that's how you would be able to sort that as well, is just going through all of that. You can look at current and future, past 90 days, or all. So we are right there. When we are looking at my substitutions, this is any sub this is any classes that you have submitted um for like let's say you've put time off in. Uh, I'll show you that shortly. If you have put any time off and it interferes with any of your classes that you're assigned to, this is where it will show the my substitutions, and that is where you'll be able to see if they have been uh, picked up or not, the uh, substitute. So as you can see here, it says unassigned. That's because uh, there's been no substitute assigned to that class that you have put in for um, time off for. When you are looking at your time off or your availability, you will click right up here to view availability. And this is how you can look at it. So this is showing me all of, all of my availability. You can look right here at just availability itself versus time off. The all um, is your availability as well as your time off. So if I want to add more time off, or if I want to add a new day for time off, I can go right here to add time off. I am going to say, let's say for Halloween, I want to be off. Um, so that is automatically going to change to where it's that Thursday because I have edited this to only be on a Thursday, but let's say I went there and I said, I want to be Thursday, Friday off. It will then show me both of those days. So let's go back right there and let's say I need to be off at 3 p.m. And I would like to just be off for the rest of the day. So I can put in here. Uh, 11 59 p.m. That will take care of it for the rest of the day. And I'll put in here Halloween. I can then save that. And as you can see, this is my newest entry. Um, so this is showing me that October 31st of 2024, I have requested to be off from 3 p.m. to 11 59 uh, p.m. So when I go back to my schedule, it'll show if I have any classes scheduled for October 31st between 3 and 11.59, it'll show that I have new uh, classes that need substitutions. And again, you can see that right here in your time off uh, little category right here. If you wanna edit this, you absolutely can. You can do your comment or you can delete this. So let's say change or plans changed for September 10th, I can just very quickly click delete. And then again, click delete this entry right there. It is gone. It is also gone from this page and it'll also be gone from my substitutions that have been needed. When we are looking at availability, um, that is when your staff is available. So as you can see right here from September 11th to December 31st, I am available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and then same thing here from September 1st to September 9th is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. Um, but let's say, so like right here, this Sunday is from 12 to 8. I'm only available from 12 to 8 on Sundays during this time. If I need to edit that, I can go right here to edit. And let's say I actually need to be off from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. I can then save that. And that'll, that'll save that right there. If I want to add new availability, I can absolutely do that. I can click Add Availability. And let's say I want to go ahead and put in the first quarter of 2025 availability. I will scroll to the end of March, put that in. And let's say I'm a college student um, and I have specific times that I need to be on and off each day. So um, I am going to say on Mondays, I'm available from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then let's say I have a class at 12 o'clock. I can click this little plus button. And then I can say, let's say I only have one class that day. My class is at 12 a.m. Um, again, this is my, my, this is my staff member who's in college. They have, a, they have a class at 12. They can be back. Uh, to teach at 2 p.m. and then they are available until 8. And if that is how their schedule is for the entire week, what you can do is you can click copy all 
And as you can see, that has um, added all of that in for Monday through Sunday. If I only meant to do that for one day, what I can do is I can click cancel, come back in here, click add availability, and start that process all over. Let's go back, March. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some random times in here. Let's add another one here. And then we're gonna put 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then here we're gonna say, uh, oops, I'm gonna put a.m. here to 8 p.m. And let's say I only want to work during this time, I only want to work Monday through Wednesday. I don't have to put anything through this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Or if let's say I'm available all day Saturday, I can click this right here and it says, okay, I'm available all day. Same thing for Sunday, I can click that. So then that means I'm only available Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday, I'm not available at all because I don't have any classes uh, or excuse me, any times put in right here. And then Saturday, Sunday, I'm available all day. And then I can save. And as you can see, that is now part of my availability that I have for January, starting January of uh, 2025. So that is anything that has to do with availability, time off, um, anything like that. So once you are done there, you can go back to I'm finished. And then you can see that my substitution ha has now cleared because of that September 10th day that I got out of there. Um, and then, so that, like I said, is everything to do with my schedule. Next thing we're gonna be looking at um, is your time card. So we're gonna go right here to time card. And as you can see right here, this shows uh, time filters that you can put in. So let's say I wanted to look at last week. I can absolutely do that. Go right there. As you can see, this staff member didn't work any of last week. Um, I can go to next week. I can look at different dates. I can look at different departments. And I can also look at different overtimes. So let's go back to this week, go. And as you can see um, right here, it shows that I am clocked in currently. It shows the location that I was clocked in. It shows what time I clocked in. And then let's say I wanna go ahead and clock out for this staff member. I can click continue to clock out. And so now it's saying, okay, I worked 1.85 hours. And I can put a note in here if I would like. So I can say lunch and save that. And then whenever I'm done with lunch, I come right back up here to clock in. And now you can see right here, I clocked out at 122, I clocked back in at 123. Um, so that is how you can do that or how your staff can do that. If let's say you have um, gone back to your staff, your staff portal and your portal settings, and I want this manual in and out, I can save changes. I'm gonna go back to staff portal, launch staff portal, log back in, go back to my time card, and then I would be able to um, type in my time. The reason I'm not able to type in my time right now is because I have not logged out of Jackrabbit and logged back into Jackrabbit. So that is why you're seeing that um, or not seeing that change right there. All right. Now, if we go to manage classes, this is where your staff will probably spend a majority of their time. Um, so as you can see here, there are little keys to so this orange check mark says partial attendance. Green check mark means complete attendance. So um, this is this is one of those uh, situations where one of my staff members has already gone in and taken that partial attendance. So if we go right over here, all the way over here to the right, I can go into attendance. And you can see here that Caitlin Kurtz has already been marked as absent. But let's say I also remember that Cynthia Tyler is also going to be absent. 
I can go ahead and click absent and I can put a note in here and say, mom informed they would be out all week. And then as part of my settings, I've got right here, if I can allow the um, staff member to uh, to check if th this, this absence is eligible for a makeup or not. So I can very easily click that right there and then I can save. If I want to uh, undo that, I absolutely can undo that. Oh, it says no changes to undo. That's because I had saved it. So let's say I have marked this as absent. I can go back and undo. And now West Lincoln is not marked as absent there. If I know that everyone is going to be present or everyone's going to be absent, I can very quickly just click all sent or all present or all absent. Um, and I can just go down line by line. So I can click present for Wes Lincoln and Zach and Tyler. Let's say I've already seen them today. I can just go ahead and click present for those. And then I can click save. That says attendance is completed. If I go back here, this is now a green check mark saying that complete attendance has been done for this hip hop 2000 class. So you can do that for all of this for every single class. If I went in and I started um, any of these attendants, I would be able to very quickly just go in there, say, okay, Courtney Lincoln, I know she's not going to be here. I can save that in return. And while you are in this attendance, what you can see is that you can also go to skills and levels, email and resources. That is the same thing that is showing right over here on the right. So let's say I want to go ahead and go to skills and levels. Again, this is all of those um, right here that you can look at the attendance, the email, and the resources. Um, Bridget, I see you have raised your hand. If you have a question, um, please go ahead and throw that in the Q&A for me. Thank you. Um, okay, so skills. So when we are looking at skills, this is the progress versus the information. So the progress is showing when the um, student was assigned the, um, the skill. Sorry, my brain went dead for a second. Um, this is when they started it, tested, and attained it. So this is only looking at one skill for one student. If I want to look at all of the skills that a current student is um, assigned to, I can click right here to this edit, and you can see these are the three that they are um, assigned, and I can look at when they started, tested, and everything. So let's say the kickball change, um, Caitlin started today and tested it and attained it. I can click save, and this is now that green check mark. And again, here are all of those uh, little key indicators here. So the um, blue check mark is started, Orange is tested, green is attained, and the um, little red is not started. If I want to look at all of the um, students that are assigned to each individual skill, I can very quickly click here for, let's say, body top. And I can then see, okay, one, two, three, four, all four of my um, students are showing right here, and I can mass edit all of this here by doing this, or I can do this right here to also update students' existing dates. So I have now edited all of those. Kind of saves you and your staff a little bit of place. I can save that. And as you can see right here, there is a little YouTube video. Um, that is, or YouTube icon, that is the um, link that I have added into this skill here. Same thing here for information, I can put that in. If I am a staff member, I can also put one in here if I would like. And then we can go back there. So that is everything that has to do with um, skills. The other, well, the other thing I do want to say is that you can add notes in here. Um, so you can say here means a little more work on the footwork. And I can save that. That way, I when I'm looking at uh, you know next week's class or the next class that Caitlin is in for this Hip Hop 2000, 
I can look in here and I can say, okay, I remember that Caitlin needs a little bit more work on that full work. So I'm going to focus on that for her that day. Um, same thing there with that information. That's where that, that uh, video is. When we are looking at emails, this is how you can email or compose an email um, to anyone in your class. Uh, the default is to include everyone who has a contact email um, in their profile or their family profile. You can put a subject, you can put a message. Replies will be sent to 1234 at gmail.com. Um, and then these are who you are sending it to. If you only want to send it to, let's say, West, um, you can absolutely do that. And then you can just very quickly click send right there. And the last thing we're going to be looking at is resources. And resources is something that you can um, add in. So let's say you've got um, a YouTube video that you also want to uh, add in. You can absolutely do that and what you can do. Um, there's, there's obviously two different ways. I've shown you that one way uh, that you can do for a specific, excuse me, for a specific skill. You can also put one in here for resources. If let's say it is a full dance that you want to show them rather than a tutorial or just one specific skill, you can put that in and then you can click view and it'll update or excuse me, it will um, pull in the YouTube um, or however you have it put in there, um, a YouTube, an MP4 uh, file, anything like that, it'll automatically uh, start when you click view. You can also add new here. If you wanna add a new one, you can put in the name, you can say I'll upload it or I'll link it to, and then you can click add. And if you want to publish it to the parent portal. So I believe that is everything. When I am done, I can click clock out. I want to continue with clock out. Um, and the only other thing right here is this actions right here. You can reset a password, you can change location, or you can just log out. So what I'll do right here is I will log out. It's going to take me back to that staff portal login page. Uh, but that's everything that I need to show for today when it comes to the staff portal. Um, let's go ahead and go back right over here. And let's see what kind of questions we've got in here. Um, before anybody signs out, I do want to just remind you that there is um, a recording of this that will be sent out tomorrow. Uh, if you will, please fill out that survey that it will prompt you to fill out when you close out of this webinar. Please fill out that survey. It helps me know how I did today um, and what I can improve on. And then lastly is this QR code to join our Facebook user group. I highly recommend doing that. That way you can ask um, any questions uh, to other users of Jackrabbit. Highly, highly recommend doing that. So. Uh, I'm going to look at a couple of these questions and see if I need to answer of these any of these live. All right, looks like there is a question about the substitution feature. Um, so let's look at that. It says how to use the substitution feature. Um, so let's go right over here. And this is what I recommend to do is if you go over here to reports and you click find reports, I would put in substitution or sub. And then I can click substitutes. And so this is showing me the two sub substitutions that I need. Um, so if I want to go right here, this is going to show me the class. I can click ballet. That, that class name is ballet. And it says instructors. These are the instructors that are assigned. And these are the substitution dates that are assigned um, or that need. So what I can do is I can go right here. Um, I can refresh grid, I can send a message, I can adjust columns, obviously all of that. Also assign substitute right here. So then I can put in here, I can put in March 1st, 
to mark first. I can select my substitute. And then I can save. And so now that is showing that I have now um, added that substitution in. So that is a great way to use that. Um, let's see, Nikki, I have never used the staff portal. What is the best way to get started? Um, so there are actually a couple of links that I will send you um, and that will be able to help. Um, so it's, it's gonna be quite a few links. It's gonna be how to set up your staff portal because um, there's a lot of settings that you have to set up for how you want your staff to be able to view everything. Um, and then we can go from there. So Nikki, just give me one second and I'll send you some of those links. Kevin, I just sent you those same links as well. All right. Any last minute questions? I will keep this open for a couple more minutes just to see if there are any more last minute questions that need to be answered. Um, but if you are logging out, please again, fill out that survey. I hope I answered all of your questions that you had today. If not, you can email me at training at jackrabbittech.com. Again, my name is Emily Cole, um, and it has been a pleasure having you in this webinar today. Thank you. All right, I don't see any more questions coming in and I see that participant number dropping down. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it. If you are feverishly typing a question and I end it, uh, please just email me and I will be able to address it. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day.